This is the August 3rd uh, Conway Select Board meeting starting at 6.04. Uh, we're holding this meeting by Zoom. Uh, the Zoom recording does get transferred to FCAT and they will be putting it up uh, on their FCAT uh, um, video on demand page through YouTube. Um, so we have two minutes we have to approve. Uh, the, the July 6th minutes, did everybody read the July 6th minutes? Yeah. Yeah. And the July 20th minutes. So we, we might as well do both of them together. They seem okay? So yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve them. Second. Good. Uh, all in favor? Yes. I see, I, see, I see nodding. That looks great. Yeah. Unanimous. Okay. I say I do. So we have three warrants we need to approve. Uh, a vendor warrant for 111.553, a payroll warrant for 84.454, and a payroll deduction warrant for 20,914. Does anybody have any questions about them? They look okay? Yeah. Um, well, then, they got sent to me. I thought that they all made sense. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, so I'll make a motion that we approve those three warrants. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay, everybody say aye, yeah? Yes. So, aye. Any nays? Okay, unanimous. So how about meetings attended by select board members? Erica, how about you? I have not attended any other meetings besides select board since we last okay. met. We, we often start with the newest select board member first. Just what you, you get to go first there. Uh, and uh, so you've elevated Phil now, so that's a good thing. So, okay, how about, so Phil? I think I'm gonna be talking about it in the agenda item, but I will say I was at nine school committee meetings in the past three weeks. Heroic, the really. Average length of time was two hours per. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you, you'll talk about them because you're actually on the agenda to do that, so we'll do it then. Okay. Uh, I had a conservation commission meeting and uh, that's it for me. So, any public comments? Uh, I, I, Bob, I think you're actually officially on the agenda, so we don't have to call yours public comments. There was a letter that came in that we were going to consider a public comment, um, and the person was going to talk about it, but he said he couldn't make it today, so we'll do that in a couple weeks. So, no public comments? Um, so, Phil, yeah. that's your chance. Yeah, so, so the, uh, what's definitely the biggest news in town is what is the school reopening plan uh, and situation. And so, for those that don't know, I'm on the Conway School Committee and the Frontier School Committee as well. Um, and uh, the, it, it's, it's an extremely stressful thing for every single person involved and I cannot exaggerate the amount of anxiety and emotional connection to these issues and concern of everybody. The school committee meetings have been on Zoom and they've been having 140 and 150 parents dial in. And um, yeah, the, 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 if you remember from two weeks ago, the school committee um, by, by state uh, under the direction of the governor had to prepare three options for, for reopening. Um, the all, ver all online, all in person and a hybrid. And um, that, that was done. And this week coming up, actually, I believe Tuesday and Thursday of this week, it will be the votes to pick one of those. And if you've seen the newspaper, um, Greenfield picked a mostly online, almost all online. Pioneer is headed towards the more online. Um, we actually, uh, we, we actually uh, are going to, the administration at least is arguing for more of a hybrid um, with more in-person instruction. And um, the teachers unions have come out with uh, letters officially opposing that and asking for all on uh, all online. Um, I have to tell you, just the, just just what was amazing over the weekend, getting um, four different phone calls and emails from the four Conway Grammar School teachers that are still there that taught my daughter, and how two of them tearfully begged 
me to, go, to vote for all online, and now two of them tearfully beg me to vote for in-person hybrid instruction. Um, and I, that, that's been my sense of it. The, the, the parent survey were, uh, for, 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 our, our, for Conway Grammar School, four out of five families um, wanted to do the, a, a hybrid, but one out of five families said that they are under no circumstances are they coming back until there's a vaccine. Um, so that, um, and, and, and as near as I can tell for the, 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 the state, you know, a default position might be to defer to what the building wants to do. And as near as I can tell, there's a pretty close division between uh, amongst the staff. Um, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the actual plan itself was, uh, it was amazing how many eventualities have been discussed plan for but there's just as many that you could name probably off the top of your head even that um, it, 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 that, that are going to depend on further data further state instruction etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, it, 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 it's yeah so um, that's all happening um, and Bill, when does the school committee vote uh, Tuesday uh, for Frontier and Thursday for Union 38 and so one of the things that's actually has kept me up at night this past week is that we've been instructed by the, our, our school attorney that this is one of the rare votes that we have to vote on as four individual school committees um, during a Union 38 joint school committee meeting. And so let me just explain the danger of that, which is that um, we, the, the four towns that make up Union 38 uh, are four individual town school districts for their elementary schools, and then we are a regional district for our junior and senior high school. Um, the, the, the individual town school is an individual town school committee. We joined together for a superintendency union. We hired the same superintendent um, and central office. But this is a, a real situation where the, the four towns are not guaranteed to vote the same way, which would be sort of like throwing an atomic bomb into the governance structure of our school administration. Um, so that's, there's that happening as well. Um, so the, the uh, uh, and, and I can honestly say that I'm, st I'm still up in the air myself. There, um, there's so many people, this is one of the rare school policy decisions that people from all across the community, you know, many without, you know, um, children in the school or th that haven't felt connected to the school in any way, particularly, um, many of them have weighed in and um, offered feedback and points and whatnot. The, for those that don't know, on, on the FRSU um, 38 website, um, it, it is the reopening plan and they're still soliciting comment and feedback. Um, we do know though that we can put this out there too. We are looking for donations, uh, picnic tables to the grammar school, um, not donations. You have to drop them off and then you have to pick them up when school closes or during winter. Um, we're looking for people that have connections with tent rental companies um, to step forward. And uh, they're also looking for volunteers to deliver the lunch, hot lunches to uh, children that are qualify for them, but will be doing online uh, instruction in Conway, uh, because the people that have been doing those deliveries are the teachers who will be teaching when the school starts. So there's all that too. Aren't you glad you asked? Uh, this is Tom. Can I just make a request? Uh, yes. If you're not on the select board and you're not speaking, could you please mute your phone? Thank you. You got to unmute, Bob. You're right. I muted myself just because there was so much noise, a lot of noise. So, uh, uh, you can mute yourself by clicking on the, the mute button in your lower left corner or clicking on the mute blue little button that's right in your little picture window, either way. Uh, I, what, what choices do parents have? In other words, if, a, if the school votes that you have to go, you know, in person and a parent is uncomfortable, this, do they? That's a great question. So this entire school year, parents have the um, legal choice to keep their child at home for any reason or no reason at all. Um, and 
they don't have to communicate the reason. Um, but that's something that every, all parents are, uh, hopefully will, if, if, if they're not comfortable, you know, you have the right to, to have online instruction provided for you. Um, and one, one, the, the other right parents have that's new for this year versus the spring is that any child with an in, with an IEP with its own with with it with um, with if that child has an individualized um, education program uh, starting for this school year that program has to be followed by the school as it is written whereas there were all kinds of waivers for the whole spring um, so that's a whole you know that that. Those are all. Those are things that sort of mitigate towards doing a hybrid reopening because if you have to provide all of those services in that program, that means you have to provide physical contact, in-person instruction to at least that portion of children. The, the the those that portion of children that has those plans, which is a significant portion. Um, so so you. Um, but 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 the the whole the whole idea that, that the school doesn't know on any given day how many kids are going to show up just wreaks havoc with staffing with planning with the meal with the you know with the school lunch program with transportation um, it, it's just and, and that the, the permutations and variables on everything are just mind numbingly uh, um, exhausting. Ex Exhausting, and you know that 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 they are partnering with um, with Cooley Dick and with uh, um, uh, Bay State to which are the two locations that can do COVID testing in house and get and have results within 24 hours or 48 hours. So they they are partnering with those institutions to do tests um, as needed. Uh, because it has been determined by our school nurse and the public health authorities that set that if results can't be obtained within 72 hours, the, the model that we're trying, that the hybrid model just breaks down. Um, and, and if you try to go get tested in community health or, you know, CVS, those are all one week waits right now. So that's a whole nother aspect to it that, um, you know, what happens when somebody tests positive, what still is up in the air is what happens in, a, in somebody in another school test. What happens if Greenfield has a cluster? What happens if Amherst or Northampton has a cluster? How how much do we? What is our so so? Those are still the issues that have you know that we've talked about and haven't really decided what a firm policy is going to be with regard to that. But those are the things that I consider more likely than Conway having a cluster. Um, uh, but. Um, it, these the, the amount of work that everybody's done is just my I'm so impressed with our teachers have just not had a summer off um, they've been working on this on these protocols um, you know almost full-time the entire summer like all of them and even the ones that are really opposed to it so um, yeah Conway yeah. usually has a lot of school choice kids will they be do and that's and that's the whole thing. So and and also staff that, that lives outside of town, and um, and yes, there's a fair amount from Greenfield. Yes, there's a fair amount from um, Orange, and um, we have some from Northampton and Hadley and whatever. So uh, and normally those kids are automatically enrolled in Conway if they want. I mean, they don't. They right. you know they're they're defaulted in or whatever the right word is. Yes. So, um, you know, and, and, and you read the plan, you spend hours and hours and hours talking about it, you answer everybody's question, and then it kind of hits you that what you're really asking and, tell, and asking people is saying, trust me, trust us. Um, and that's a hard, you know. When will parents have to make a decision? Yeah, parents will be reevaluating that every day, just like the school administration will be, and everybody, and every staff member, and everybody else. Um, you know that the ideal world would have it. Uh, the ideal pandemic world <coughs> would would have it so that those teachers that were that were not comfortable with live instruction that wanted to do virtual instruction would would be the correct amount for those parents that wanted to do <laughs> virtual instruction and. The, 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 the teachers that remain would be the correct amount for the students that want to be there in building and that that 
Um, but, you know, and, and I'm told that actually Conway has the closest to those correct desired ratios as any of them. But yeah. still, staffing, staffing is, um, it, it, this is just a, a I, I, my, you know, I pity these poor administration people. I really do. Uh, Darius is just doing such an unbelievable job. Okay, any more questions for Phil? Thank you. Uh, so Tom, what, what additional committee and staff appointments do we have? Uh, well, they're um, on the agenda. Um, we have uh, three representatives for emergency dispatch, uh, Gemma, Ken, and uh, uh, Chief Baker, and one member of the Cable Advisory Committee, uh, Ron Hawks. So is there any discussion about them? Uh, anybody have an issue about making those appointments? Otherwise, I'll just make a motion that we that we approve those four. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Great. It doesn't seem like, we, you know, other than to say thank you very much, you know, it doesn't involve a lot of discussion. Um, so under new business, the uh, first thing we have under new business is to sign a contract for the South River Municipal Vulnerability Plan work. Uh, Kimberly, is that uh, yeah, this is, for you to talk to? Or, this, um, is, this, this is the next phase of uh, what town meeting voted for uh, back, in, um, back in late June. This is the plan that we've been working on for work on the South River. And it's part of a much larger uh, plan that the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments uh, got a, a large grant for. And uh, we're very pleased that it's going to get us um, uh, shovel-ready designs mm -hmm. for culvert work and um, uh, some legal work done, I believe, around uh, South River property. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll fund um, uh, the FERCOG staff working with our planning board on, on zoning around the South River uh, flood zones. Uh, and that's a brief introduction, but uh, perhaps uh, Kimberly can say a few more words. Sure, um, I'd be happy to. So the, as Tom mentioned, the um, grant is a very uh, large one. It's part of the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness, the MVP Action Grant Program. And it sets aside about um, a quarter of the money, almost a third of the money uh, to work with a consulting engineering firm to develop um, the final designs, the bid ready construction documents and um, help with the environmental permitting for five priority projects that um, have been previously identified in all the work that we've been doing over the last decade or so. And there will be a process uh, to work with the community um, and the stakeholders like Friends of the South River to uh, look at all of these existing projects and um, select those five priority projects. So that will be done with the involvement of the town of Conway. We will also be working with um, Trout Unlimited staff and the highway superintendent to identify five um, high risk culverts in town for 30 percent uh, designs so when the town either applies for a hazard mitigation grant or MVP funding that design work will be done the other thing that we'll be doing is inventorying all of the drainage um, culverts in town so these are culverts that are not subject to the mass stream crossing standards but they still present um, a lot of uh, trouble to or cause a lot of trouble because they are undersized 
you know, roadways get washed out. There's a lot of flooding. Um, these are culverts, however, that the town can replace themselves without going through a lengthy permitting process. So we're going to create a um, GIS map of these culverts and then develop a protocol for what we call right sizing them. So when the highway superintendent um, decides to replace a structure, he'll have the information he needs in order to uh, select a size, a replacement size that, um, you know, hopefully will handle these more frequent and intense storm events that we've been seeing. Um, this, just by way of an example, um, we've done similar mapping in Holly. We're doing it now for Ashfield, and they're literally hundreds and hundreds of these structures that we're finding. Um, so I'm sure it'll be a similar case in um, Conway. Also, we'll be working with the Franklin Land Trust, as Tom um, mentioned, directly. Once we have a list of priority projects, we'll be working directly with private landowners who are interested in either having a river corridor easement or um, actually maybe a project done on their property. And as we all know, most of the property in the watershed is privately owned. So this outreach to landowners um, and hopefully their potential, you know, their interest is very critical uh, for this flood resiliency work. And so we have money in the grant um, for appraisals and also um, to cover legal fees. And then the work that I'll be doing with the planning board will um, coordinate with similar work I'll be doing with the Ashfield um, planning board on the river corridor protection overlay district mo model that we have and tailoring it uh, to the needs of the town. Well, sounds great. Uh I, I really appreciate all the work you guys have done. You know, you come to our meetings, you listen to a lot of people sort of casually say, let's work on culverts, and then you figure out what that means. <laughs> uh, it's easy for us to say, let's work on culverts. Uh, and, or, or take our rambling discussions and turning into something that sounds very professional. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Bob. <laughs> it, it happens, it's, it's happened every time. Uh, so is there any more questions about that? You know, I, I have no problem in, uh, in, in our board signing that contract. So I, I do have a, some culvert questions. Um, and uh, thank you for being here, Kim. Um, so so what, one of the things that I know that are that some of the culverts that I know are not, um, that our highway department are not fans of, are some of my favorite culverts in town. Um, mm. And, and, and I just, uh, I say this because th there's an underappreciation for the, our, the remnants that still exist from the Conway Railroad, from the Conway Electric Railway. And b besides the bridges, the abutments and stonework down at the end of Station Road, what we have left are culverts. So for instance, Michelle Ture, who, who is on this call, the, the culverts that surround your home are remnants of the, uh, the, the are, are remnants of the electric railway. And if you actually get below the road grade and you take a look at them, they're these beautiful hand cut stone things. And they were all done by Conway residents in just a couple of days. And, and um, uh, you know, I, I, I hesitate to just pour blacktop and dig those all up and, and uh, erase that portion of the town's history. So, and, and I know that's what our town highway boss um, well, just, just from a, you know, his, his position would be that these are underpowered culverts. We need bigger ones right here, 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 mm -hmm. that this is where the road washes out because these culverts are ancient and need to be fixed. Um, and uh, so that's, yeah, that's my we, take on the culvert situation. Do we have a list of those, you know, um, the, the historical society or somebody? Basically from Reed's Bridge, all the way up, uh, you know, fr fr from from Reed's Bridge, um, all, all, all the way up um, Shelburne Falls Road, all the way up River Street to the Covered Bridge. The culverts that remain, um, most of them are original to the electric railway. And those are some of the areas in town that have road 
issues from washing out from having too small of a culvert. And do we know where they are? I, I mean, are, you're saying they're hidden under the road. Um, you know, I, I, I wonder how many people besides me care about this issue. Um, <laughs> oh. I, I, I'm, I'm betting I could probably count them on one hand, but, um, but, but you know, it, um, I walk along and I'm always amazed at these types of things that we still have these, this sort of hidden history. Um, and I, and I like that stuff, but, uh, now, uh, up near where I live, there's something that I'm not sure I'd call a culvert, but it was really a cattle crossing, but it goes under the road, the Shelburne Falls Road. I don't know if you know about that one, but you know, you can almost walk upright in it. Huh. And it, it's when they used mm -hmm. to bring the cows out of the Guilford property and cross the road down to the river. Um, one thing I will say, um, Phil, is that when they do the, uh, when the staff does the field work, they document the condition of these structures and they take pictures and they will be um, geolocated in a, a GIS uh, database. Um, so that once that's done, there would be the opportunity for some discussion about which structures might be historic or, you know, might have a special reason for consideration um, if they need to be, be replaced. So I would encourage if um, you or if there's anyone else at the historic society that um, might be interested in this, you know, to pass their contact information along to me. Um, the other thing too is if you wanna walk some of these areas when the COG staff is out doing the inventory, we could try to coordinate that as well. Great. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, this is, it, it is a significant grant. Um, is the state going to still be awarding grants after uh, um, the future? Who knows? We hope so. Um, they're hope they are trying to fund this program separately. Um, I don't know what progress they've been making on that, but we, um, yeah, I mean, we have no indication that um, this money is in jeopardy. We just have been told repeatedly that we need to finish all the work this fiscal year, that there is absolutely no wiggle room um, with carrying the money over into FY22. Uh, I can't remember any work this magnitude on culverts. <laughs> you know, it just really feels It's very important. exciting. Yeah. 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 Well, and also I think too, you know, the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership um, elevated uh, this project in um, the Commonwealth's eyes as well. So you're ticking that box as well as the MVP designation that the town, towns of Conway and Ashfield have. So it's really, um, uh, I think it will be, you know, showcased as one of the um, successful uh, cooperative projects, you know, that crosses municipal boundaries, not mm. only in Franklin County, but also in Berkshire County. So it's very exciting to be a part of it. And I'm glad Conway is. So any more issues, Erica, Phil, any questions? Um, I, no. Uh, I, I, it, I, I'll make a motion that we sign sign it. If, unless you have any more questions, no. Um, Are you ready to vote? I second yeah. that motion. Thank you. So I'll vote aye. Okay. I'll vote aye. Yep. So unanimous. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank Great. you, Kimberly. Thank you. <laughs> can, can I ask you, Kim? Could you stick around just for another minute or two till we get to the Ashfield Dam question? Sure. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, so, so, so something that I wanted, that I talked to Tom that I really wanted to at least have a conversation about, and I don't know if this is going to lead to anything we're going to vote on, but, and, and, and I asked Bob, Bob was thrilled to join, and Ken was hoping he could be here, but he often gets called out on a, on a call. Um, you know, if there's anything that we should be doing or thinking about, uh, 
for accidents like we had last week or two weeks ago on the river. Um, I, excuse me, this, this is Tom. Um, the Ashfield Dam item is at the very end of the agenda. Uh, so I'm afraid it'll be uh, considerably more than a minute. Perhaps we could we could skip to yeah. that item, and okay. and, and uh, uh, so that Kimberly can uh, get off. Thank so, you, Tracy. So, 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 the, the, so well, this I really like earning all that comp time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this, this was just a request by the town of Ashfield that we sign a letter of support for their mass work grant proposal for work on the Ashfield Dam. And Kimberly, you may want to explain that better than that, but. Um, well, I, ha I haven't seen the application, but um, I can tell you that as part of this um, MVP action grant that we were just talking about, the town of Ashfield received funding to take a million dollar plus project and um, work with tie and bond to segment to phase that project into three um, phases so the product that we provided were um, construction bid documents and um, cost estimates for three separate projects because as you know the town has tried numerous times to get um, this work done, but with a million dollar plus price tag, you know, they haven't been successful. So hopefully now that it's been broken down um, into three pieces, um, they will have better luck. Um, the Masterworks application is open and actually since FERCOG, since the state asked FERCOG to review and comment on all the applications from our municipalities. We don't actually see them until they're submitted. So I can't comment on the application directly. Um, but I think I do have to give a shout out to the town of Ashfield for their uh, perseverance. I don't know if this is like this time they've tried to um, get this get this work funded. But I, you yeah, know, and they I, just voted some money for it at their town meeting, I think. Yep, they did. They had, um, they voted a substantial amount of money. And then also they had money that they used as match towards, you know, the, the task, the MVP task to segment um, the project into three phases. So the town, you know, continues to be committed, um, in my opinion, um, you know, to, to try to get this work done. So as I, as I read the letter, and I'll get just a minute, Phil, I know that you want to talk about this, and that's great. But the, the letter is just asking us to support. It starts off just saying, on behalf of the town of Conway, it gives us great pleasure to support the town of Asheville's application for a MassWorks grant. If successful, the grant will fund major improvements to the much needed repairs to the Ashfield Lake Dam. And it closes by saying thanks for the opportunity to express our support. Uh, so that's that's the letter we're being asked to sign. So, um, and I, I, you know, I, I, I personally have been uh, not as charitable towards uh, in my characterizations of the town of the relationship towards their dam. Um, that, and and I, you know, I should start out by saying that the d dam safety laws are something that I unfortunately. Uh, have way too much familiarity with due to my own family being unfortunate enough to own a dam in New Jersey that when it was bought was just surrounded by miles of farmland and not regulated but since then 100,000 people moved within where it can if it, if it bursts it, it uh, they would be affected and the amount of annual upkeep engineer at biannual that just the, the amount for that study was two hundred thousand dollars the amount of repairs that were required were a million dollars and it and as a private landowner they it, it, it had to be done and so you know when I, and when I first read the tie and bond study from was it five six years ago um, that that what, what they recommended to be done very little of that was just the concrete just, just the the spillway was repaired but um, there, there was a whole lot in that study that uh, um, that you know th th those were those weren't sort of recommendations; those were requirements. 
the, the, that study is required under the, the dam safety law and the town is required to comply with the recommendations that that study um, comes up with. And that was years ago. And, you know, and then instead of every two years, I think it was four years now till another study was done. And um, I guess that's the basis. I haven't seen the, the, the newer one, if a newer one was done. But my, I have a few real concerns because I don't know the, the, the type of the, what they're exactly planning. But if one of the, the ideas tossed out before was to raise the height of the dam, which I am particularly opposed to, um, because number one, the earthen dam that exists now is um, undermined by the massive adult trees that grow in the middle of it um, and are undermining it from the, 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 the interior out. And uh, I don't know what the, what, what, it, whether removing those trees was first on the list or whether that's going to be dealt with, but that would really impact people's experience on the Ashfield Lake and the Ashfield Town Beach. And I don't know what the town willingness or ability to confront just even that portion of the project really is. Um, but but it, it, if they're planning on adding a foot to a dam that um, has already safety issues that have been identified that aren't going to be addressed, that increases the volatility of the water during a hot, you know, the thousand year flood events by, by like exponentially from just one foot increase to it. And it really increases the danger to, the, to, to our residents. And I've always felt when that stuff first came out and the, the town didn't really address it from the point of view of, hey, we have to do this, which, is, which would have been the more responsible uh, a, a way to go about it, in my opinion, because um, I still think that this, you know, um, but the, the, the whole idea that, uh, you know, that um, it, it, it's Conway that bears the risk of the failure of the dam, and I, and I thought that, that that's what led to sort of Ashfield not really taking as, it as serious as what they otherwise should be. Um, and there's, there was a whole lot of other stuff too, the, the, the fact that our emergency services and fire companies don't train on what the chemicals are that are in the Ashfield um, water treatment facility um, that is at risk from a dam burst. And th those are repositories for hazardous chemicals, which are used in the normal water filtration, whatever. And, uh, there's all kinds of stuff that, uh, that, that has never been addressed. I've asked for a, a meeting with the Ashfield selectmen to sort of talk about this and what's exactly in their plan um well well would those things you're talking about be a reason not to uh you know support their mass yeah. works grant uh, I, it feels like they're all good reasons to do it if i'm being asked to support a damn plan that a, a damn fixing plan that raises the height of that dam um i don't want to support that so because that, that dramatically increases the risks in, in case of failure. And all dams fail eventually. No, I can certainly be thankful that we don't have a, a lake like that in Conway. And this is true. But we have historically uh, um, faced the consequences of the failure of dams between here and, and Ashfield. And um, it's wiped out our town, I believe, three times. So um, I, I just think it's up to us to insist that what be done, what is done, is done it, um, safely for us. And um, you know, if I'm if I'm Ashfield and I'm designing a thousand-year fix, and the state is paying for it, I'm probably going to want it so that uh, you know you can have more development around the lake and more more of the watershed can be paved over and more tax revenue can be earned through the sale of homes and, and all that, which is one of the reasons why it's the risk of dam failure and, and the dam problems is uh, is what it is, is because of the years of development that they, they've had there, the slow gradual paving over of the watershed draining into the Ashfield Lake. Um, so Kimberly, in the MVP program, we talked about this dam a lot. Uh, will Conway have any input into what the what the grant's going to fund? Um, well, the 
so the, they're applying for a MassWorks grant and I, I haven't seen the application and I don't know what their requirements would be um, in terms of the participation of the town of Conway, but um, I, you know, I think that the town could uh, initiate some contact with Asheville and just express the level of involvement that you'd like to have if the MassWorks funding comes through. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can't, um, you know, I'm sorry that I can't provide kind of more information than I have, which is to say that, um, you know, the, the town segmented the project so that hopefully it could be, um, it could receive funding. Um, the, you know, the, every, uh, all the documents were updated um, as part of the work as well, but, um, you know, I don't feel comfortable like talking about specifics um, in any detail because I'm not an engineer. So oh, that's my question. Is there currently a, a, an engineering plan in place and what we're being asked to do is write a letter in support of Ashfield obtaining a grant to implement the dam mitigation plan that exists already? Yeah, so they, they um, I would imagine, again, I haven't seen the application and I didn't, I could not help them prepare it. Um, because we review them at the COG, but I would anticipate that what they did was they took phase one of the project, and so they have all the engineering documents, um, the construction documents, it's ready to go out to bid, um, and they're asking for funding to, to implement that work. What, what that work entails, I don't know. Well, is there a sentence or two you'd like us to add to this letter that would, you know, express our concern for the safety of Conway? Or, you know, I mean, even specifically talk about the, the fear of raising the level of the dam. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, that, that's a letter to Ashfield. Um, they're asking us to sign a letter of support for a grant to the state. So I think we'd have to we'd have to have some communication with Ashfield um, about that. That that would not be this letter. Uh huh. So I mean, uh, Bob. I mean, I, I you know Ashfield's doing their town their select board meetings by Zoom as well. Um, we can Zoom into each other's Zoom and just talk this out um, someone in there someone in that town knows what they're planning on spending the money on yeah and and uh you know that's uh, you know and i i sure would like to see the new tie-in bond study if there w was a new one or as part of this grant asking for a new one to be made that, that done that should have been done a couple years ago, but they're super expensive and they're supposed to be biannual. Um, and, the, the, you know, and, and that's part of it. I mean, the, the, the subtext in this is that the state has downgraded the safety of the Asheville Lake Dam, I guess last year, um, which is a big deal. And, uh, you know, that's not, that's not good news for the people of Conway. No, but, but I, I just don't see this fear as being a reason not to support their their, you know, their infrastructure grant. Yeah, you know, I, I, the, the original tie-in bond study had a long discussion about the increase in, 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 um, in, in water volatility and the scouring effect that that has once you build the dam higher. And, um, and there were significant engineering and safety issues just that, that were that, that are brought about once you decide to raise a dam up. That earthen dam is is like the size of a football field, lengthwise. People don't realize. Um, okay, so what I'm hearing is we're not ready to sign the letter now, 
but I should contact Ashfield and, and get some information from them or, or, or get some meeting information. Do we have time to wait? If, if, that's, if we can, that'd be okay. Uh, I mean, I'd like us all to support it and, and you know, but, but you, have a, you have real reservations. So I'm wondering how to work them out. Yeah, I mean, I've had these questions for a couple of years. I sure would like to just talk with them. Okay. Tom, do you think you could get us on their select board meeting? I'll ask them for information and the best way to get it to you and when, when they're meeting on this. Great. Thanks, Tom. Okay, so we'll postpone this for now. Thanks, Bob. No, thank you. Okay, Bob, do you want to talk about the accident and you know what suggestions you might have? Okay. Thank you, Kenny. Come on, right? You're, yeah. Okay. Uh, just quick intro. Um, Bob Van Gelder. Uh, oh, well, actually, no. I meant Bob. I meant Bob Baker. Uh, oh, I'm but, sorry. I'm anyway, sorry. But hold it. I had the wrong Bob. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, Bob, you're up. You're Bob Van, Bob Van Gelder. You're up next. Is that? Can you wait a little longer? A little longer. Uh, on our agenda, Bob Baker was going to talk about uh, the the accident that occurred where a young boy almost got drowned, uh, which you know, which is the most horrible outcome of of what you're worried about. Okay, I'm here, Tom, uh, Bob. Hi, Bob. Uh, well, I, How are you I, today? I don't know what you want to say. I'm, you know, I'm just wondering, are there things we could do that would lower the risk of accidents like this? I know that, you know, I know you guys have done a lot. You and you know, you practice on the boat, and you practice your technique, your, at your river rescue, and and you know, and the newspaper justifiably re really talked about how well you guys did during this this accident but okay uh, let me say that uh, <clears throat> this accident that we had with the 16 year old boy had his had his fork top between uh, the ledge cut going down the sluice way into a big pool uh, and approximately they estimate there's probably over a thousand people a summer that slide down the sluice way it just is a freak thing that the young boy had his foot small enough they could get it get it between this crack and get himself wedged in it so he couldn't get out. Um, it took our rescuers, uh, not only Conway's Fire, but uh, South Eva Fire assisted us in South County Ambulance. And they all did a fantastic job. It took us an hour and a half to get the young man's foot uh, out of the crevice so we could get him out of the water. Um, you might want to know that uh, in that now and a half uh, time, the the only alternative of getting him out of there it was decided that we had to put the boy to sleep. The, the EMS, South County EMS, gave him a shot to put him to sleep to loosen up his muscles. And we lubricated his foot. My, my people, uh, my, son, my son Adam and uh, the deputy chief, uh, Dennis Patterson from South Devo, we were in the water around him. They lubricated his foot up the best they could with uh, some lubricants. And after he was put to sleep, they just and they tugged and tugged and actually got got his foot out. Uh, without him going to sleep, they probably would not have been able to do that because he would have been in severe pain. So uh, we got him out of there. We were very much concerned about him and the other rescuers because uh, of the water temperature was. Even though it was summertime, it was quite cool, and they'd been in there so long <clears throat> that I had called in the, the uh, Northville dive team to assist us because of the rescuers were getting tired, very, very tired. I got some great pictures of it that I can't uh, advertise. I got them for our training sessions, but uh, I can't advertise it because of the parent, the father, and the son's faces are shown, and you can't release them to the public. But... Um, <clears throat> I had several of our firefighters after this was all over that got beat up pretty bad. Uh, from the front, actually, they, what they got beat up from was the, the rushing of the water coming down this sluice way 
some of them have still got black and blue marks on their bodies, on their stomachs and on their legs. Uh, it's just two of them that still have that, that, that they showed to me the other day, they still have it. Uh, we had them checked out by our ambulance service to make sure they were all all right and didn't need hospitalization, which was great, they didn't. But they were very tired, very beat up, and I, I'm very, very thankful for everything they did. Because uh, we had a, <clears throat> last Wednesday night, we had a critique on the situation with the South County and South River Fire and everybody of our people that were involved with this incident. And unbeknown to us, which was absolutely fabulous, the father and the young boy showed up. Oh, wow. Um, and they showed up to at our firehouse to congratulate us and thank us very much for saving his life. So, uh, and I thought that was kudos to the father um, for doing that. And uh, he even brought his other two children that were with him because one of his other boys was the one that initiated the 911 call while the father was keeping the kid from drowning in the water. So uh, it was a fantastic night as far as everything goes. Um, so that's all I want to say about the rescue. Uh, you asked, Bob, you asked me about, uh, is there anything we can do? I would say that there's probably nothing that anybody could do at this point. Uh, it, that is on private land down there. Uh, it used to be posted. I don't know if there's posted signs down there now anymore. Uh, it's not town owned land or nothing like that where the boy got stuck. Uh, so, and which I know it's, it's a hole? very heavy use. Bob yeah. Eric is trying to ask you a question. Yeah, which which swimming hole is this exactly? Is this the one on Reed's Ridge Road? The same one we're talking about that Bob Van Gelder had sent photos of the parking? And the right, parking? yes, it, it's below Bob Van Gelder's a little ways around the corner. It's called Snake Hole. Snake Hole, okay, all right. Uh, it's in the, in the South River. Uh, very popular spot. If you probably went down there right now, you'd probably say three or four cars down there. Yeah. Um, there's really not much we can do there. I have been, uh, we have rescued people on the Deerfield River uh, several different times. Uh, one night we rescued seven of them at two o'clock in the morning because they opted to on their own to put in their own tubes and strike out on their own just before dark, not knowing where they were going. Um, and they ended up putting ashore before they got down to, well, they didn't know where they were going, before they got to the county station. And they dialed 911 in a very uh, low battery operated phone, and uh, the control was able to uh, GPS their phone so we had some kind of idea where they were. We had to put three boats in the water, one of ours, and two of Charlemont's to, to go rescue the seven people as they were freezing to death because that, that, night, that night happened to be go down the low 60s. So they were in bathing suits, freezing cold, when we got to them. So, um, a, a couple yeah. of months ago, I was on a on a Zoom call, completely unrelated to this. That that uh, Michael Leff, you'll see, he's on our Zoom call here. He, he organized, uh, a, a, and it was basically about river access and the, the two, you know, two of the issues. You know, I mean, I talked about Conway, and at that point, the only real issue we had had was parking down at the Barnesville Ferry Bridge was the big issue last year. Um, and then there were people from Ashfield who talked about, you know, the, the Zor outdoor problems they're having up there. And, uh -huh. and so when, when we, you know, when you, Bob, when you agreed to be on this and when Ken thought he might be able to make it, I really thought Michael might enjoy at least hearing what you had to say. I don't know if, you know, you wanna, if you have a short thing you would like to say, Michael. But, sure. Yeah. So yes, you've been wondering who is this guy watching your select board meeting. Um, I'm at environmental. We live here in Chesterfield, so right on the road. And a lot of the work that I do is for Franklin Conservation District. And the one major project that I've been working on for the past year has to do with guidelines for sustainable river access, how to maintain public access to the rivers in the area. Um, a lot of what we've been looking at is on the Deerfield, but also the North River, the Green River, the Mill River stuff's going on in, in Williamsburg and Northampton and uh, the South River. And basically, um, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people, looking at a lot of these access sites and doing a lot of research. We plan to, the Franklin Conservation District plans to release a report or 
suggested guidelines and steps forward um, by the end of September. But anyhow, yeah, what you've been describing, and I know the other agenda item coming up on what is that Conway Station Road that you were, uh, you know, there's all sorts of issues like this that have been going on and getting worse and will, um, especially with increasing temperatures and, you know, it's something that needs to be addressed. And a lot of times, you know, it's all sorts of issues having to do with safety, erosion, trash, partying, noise, parking, access for emergency vehicles, all those kinds of things. Uh, there aren't easy answers, but there are different ways to uh, address those. And a lot of them will, we're hoping to be able to um, coax a lot more state funding uh, out with this kind of stuff, because uh, it's only going to become more of an issue. And what, unfortunately, you know, a lot of these, they are private property, but historically they've let people use them. Um, now the usage is increasing and overuse, misuse, some places are closing it down or some municipalities are closing down a popular site. And what that really does is just pushes that pressure somewhere else, somewhere upstream. So it's, it's a complicated thing, um, but it, it can't be ignored. And there's a lot of stakeholders, collaborators in on this. Burley McPhee, who was on the call earlier, she's uh, collaborating on this together. And so anyhow, you know, I'm here to listen to what you guys are experiencing and then also encourage anyone who would like to uh, discuss more or follow what's going on. Uh, you can contact me through Bob, Bob Armstrong, one of your three Bobs on the call <laughs> and, uh, and would love to stay in touch as we pursue this. So that's why I'm here. Just like you mentioned, one of the reasons I wanted to at least start this discussion was that, that last week, or maybe it was a week and a half ago, uh, Charlemont said they were going to seriously crack down on their parking to where they're only going to allow what they call live parking at their right. upper and lower lots. And that means that if the police show up and they say, whose car is this? They expect somebody picnicking nearby to say, that's my car. And that certainly isn't what I've ever done when I raft or tube on the, on, on the right. at Zora Gap. Uh, I leave a car down below and then park a car up above and and along with everyone else and and so I'm afraid this is going to really increase the pressure for people to come down and tube you know Bob uh, you know Van Gelder on your property or you know or come down to the Deerfield Portage company and try tubing there but a lot of it is not done by the right port of these tubing companies, they're all done by individuals that buy their tube at Davenport's, they have wonderful tubes, and, uh, and, and off you go. It's, and uh, it, it's a real draw for our area, but it's dangerous. Yeah, so Bob, I think one of the things that, you know, the, the tubing companies attract customers that sort of want to know where the spots are. And so they, they go to the tubing companies the first time, and then from then on, they go themselves. Um, and, Wait a minute. And, uh, I'm back. Am I back? You're back. You're back. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yep. And, we didn't and, say and, much. It's gone here. Um, you know, one, one of the things that, you know, that, that so, so Conway River access now has been squeezed by our neighbors in Charlemont and by our neighbors in Deerfield. Um, with the, the, because Deerfield just a couple years ago at Stillwater was a good, good place to leave your car um, as, as well. And there's, uh, you know, the, there's all sorts of restrictions there uh, that, that, that were new. And so they squeezed down there, Charlemont squeezed, and the balloon just sort of expands now up in Conway. Um, I, I, I go by the Station Road and um, uh, Bardwell's Ferry, you know, regularly. And uh, I am impressed with the amount of uh, cleanup that the, our, our uh, portage company is doing. I think without them picking up trash at those two locations, um, those would be really bad. Um, and, and, and each of those locations is so different. You know, the, 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 the ownership by the Trans Canada, the ownership by the state, um, the, the, you know, et, et cetera. It's, um, and, and then, you know, there's the whole issue of discrimination, too. Do you really want to discriminate against people based on where they live? 
um, and, and we, which sort of, to, to me, it's always sort of reeked a little bit of classism and, you know, that, that going to the river is sort of one of the last things that working folks can do with their kids that doesn't cost them a lot. And we saw that last year when, unfortunately, numerous vehicles needed to be towed um, so that emergency vehicles could get through the Bardwell's Ferry Bridge um, traffic on the Conway side right there. And that we heard some of those stories from the people that felt that it was unfair because they, they were just pulling into a spot that somebody was just vacating and there was a whole line of cars and uh, that, you know, that they were out of a job and et cetera, et cetera. And um, I, I remember all those stories and that, you know, that, it, it, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it, it's hard when, when, when you want, when the solution is to just close it all, shut it all down and put up no parking signs from here to eternity and make it so that unless you have a Conway trash sticker on the, your windshield, you can't use the river. Um, so. Can I make a couple of comments on this? I, I live in the middle of all yeah. of this. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, I live at 476 Barbell's Fray Road, corner of Barbell's Fray Road and Reesbridge Road. Been there for 33 years. I'm intimately familiar with the river and the increase in usage. Uh, just as a matter of just noting it, grew up in the South River in Conway from 62 on up my folks' house, right below where they blew the dam in 38. And uh, then I wrote a thesis on the South River State Park back in 81. So I've been around it quite a bit. In the last 10 years, what you've been saying, Phil, is that the use has been really increasing a lot. And what concerns me about the area I live in, it's it's a neighborhood. It's, it's not a public recreation area. Um, I've had to call the environmental police for the first time a couple of years ago. I've asked the uh, Fish and Wildlife, I have to get back and stop stalking at the bridge there. Um, I've had a lot of bad actors, people on my lawn, um, guy trying to drown his dog, people picnicking. I actually got sued, bogus slip and fall. I mean, the list is, is long. And I'm not just the only one who's been directly impacted to this degree in the neighborhood. Now, I know the Aldridge's, I've talked to them several times. I abut their property, they own the swimming hole, and the property begins on the river uh, where they abut me. And it's about 350 yards long, it's quite a stretch. It's named as a giant pork chop, and the meaty part is at my end, and that's the field which the Topmans maintain and harvest for money, pay off of there. I've had caravans of cars parking in there. I've asked people to leave, they got very testy. Um, there's not an awareness that private property is not public land and even a river, even if it's a public access river, which is a navigable waterway, which the South River is not a navigable waterway, you have to have permission to get to the river. So you cannot cross, say, private property to get to the Deerfield, even though it's a navigable waterway for public use. Now, down at the swimming hole, the Aldrich's had intended that for, you know, local people to use. And I've been benefactor of that. Um, I've actually gone down there several times in the last two weeks talking to people using the swimming hole to just find out where they're from. They're all really nice people. Uh, they socially distance at these times. There's five or six cars there, maybe a little, two or three little clusters. They're being safe. Uh, but then uh, yesterday I went down and someone had put a dam across the river at that point, which is, I can't tell you how many laws that violates. I spent three hours tearing it down. I'm seven years old, never been back, and I shouldn't have to do that. Um, people are starting to do things that imply some kind of ownership of a private piece of property. The uh, side on the embankment is in danger of slipping down and we're watching it creep down inches every year. That'll cost, I used to be a landscape architect, half a million dollars to fix if the road collapses, a low estimate would be. Um, when I was talking to some people down there today, they said, well, um, Puffer's Pond, for example, they limited parking, maybe that's a solution. Um, I hear Phil, you know, we want to be some kind of exclusive place. I mean, the people I met there were nice. They don't bother me at all. It's nice to see people with their children. 
Uh, in, the, in the years, I saw the neighbors uh, in front of my place when it was just neighbors. They bring their kids down. They swim in the little pool in front of our house. That's nice to see. Um, so they said, well, Puffer Pond, they, they restricted access. And I said, oh, by the way, do you know about the South River State Park? It's half a mile from here where you have river access. I said, no, we didn't. I think if you ask anyone who's at that swimming hole, they don't know it even exists. And though I'm hearing, why would I tell them if we're having problems there too? So this thing is pretty involved. There's no easy solution. Um, I can see it. Um, I mean, I suggested just bothering the, the side is in danger of collapsing and then putting parking restrictions, leaving enough for five or six cars, which is not a big crowd. And they don't party if it's nice people. Um, but I like to get rid of the dam builders and the drinkers and the people. I've seen a lot of out-of-state plates there. I've seen North Carolina plates. I've seen California plates. I've seen these people driving up and down Barbell's Ferry Road, back and forth, back and forth. I don't know if they're isolating for two weeks. I mean, all kinds of things are coming up about this. Anyway, I have more notes, but I'll stop at that. And... Uh, could you send asking. those notes to Tom? Could, 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 do you yeah. have notes? You could, that would be great. Yeah, I'll send them to Tom. Uh, yeah. you know, I mean, when we talked with the chief of police, you know, he views that this, these are problems on private property and it's hard for the town to get involved. Um, uh, there may be a way that we could work on getting more parking regulations. Uh, I mean, I think an individual landowner can, yeah. can request parking restrictions. They give me permission to post. I mean, I post, I post no trespassing signs from the ones up there now, they posted. There was another one and it's been torn down. I've watched them torn down a dozen times. Um, just add something to Bob's. Uh, they tore down the ones that our town put up down at Buzzle Ferry Ridge. <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah. Um, the ones Trans Canada put up were, were shot at, were shot through it full of bullet holes the first night they were up. Yeah. Oh, God. yeah. I, I, I had a window in a car shot out when we just went for a walk there once uh, years ago. Uh, Bob's comment about the, the rescue is very interesting, uh, personally the, the, the post effects on the rescuers. Um, I can tell you if that water was six inches higher, um, they would be hurting even more and the young man might have died. Um, if there wasn't a third person to call, the next person would have been down there and this is six o'clock would have been me walking at nine or 10 in the morning. And I know I've been down there. There's two rocks, they overlap. You get your ankle caught and you fly back. There's nowhere you can grab with your hands. Your head goes underwater. There's no way to get out of it. It's very, very dangerous. Um, sometime, Tom, uh, I'll bring a video I have from December, 2017. <laughs> of uh, during one of the high water events and we have them water will go up three four feet of seven kayaks going down that section that's extreme dangerous life-threatening sport unrestricted these people were crazy <laughs> i mean it's an insane thing to do i couldn't believe it i saw i had my iphone and I, I i walked down to where the flu is to make sure they stopped and portaged and they did uh, if one of them flipped rocks underneath the water, they wouldn't have had time to recover. For anyone who's used a kayak, you know, you, you need a little time to get back. I, I actually want to see that video. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> anyway, I, sorry to interrupt. But uh, just, no, thank you. Yeah. Hey, Bob, um, this is Robert. Uh, a couple other comments. I've had several people uh, approach me about what, there's, there's several issues here. The issue that is of the South River down below Bob Van Gelder's house, that they wanted if, and again, these are signs. We know what happens to signs sometimes. Uh, they wanted if some sign could be put up there. Of course, it's on private property. It just says this is a very dangerous swimming hole. Just to alert people that, you know, things could happen down in there. Knowing uh, you all, the others, they would love that. <laughs> uh, the other uh, signage issue that people brought up to me was down on Bartles Ferry is these people from out of the area that go down the Bartles Ferry Bridge and jump in the water, they have no mo no idea that it, it's a mile and a half downstream before they can get out of that river. 
and that's at the comedy station. It's a mile and a half from Bar Bridge to the comedy station uh, on the water itself. So maybe they wondered if some signs could be put up there at the bridge area that says, beware, there's no access out of this river for the, le- for the next mile and a half. Um, but again, you got signs that we got signs up on the cover, the iron bridge down it that kids are painted over and put stickers all over, and that's where pie on a bridge. So whether those would work or whether it would last, I mean, it's anybody's guess. Uh, but that's one option you could look at, maybe. Um, I don't think there's any way you can stop any of these people. Uh, I mean, it's really surprising to think that a lot of people will come in from out of state and jump into your river and take off downstream, not knowing where they're going to end up. Uh, and that's 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 your biggest problem you got on the on this different river. They jump in and just don't know where they're going, and don't know where they're going to end up. And they, they really don't even think about it until they, they get in trouble. So so here we're talking all about individual people that are doing it, not the portage company. But right. we also have a, uh, you know comments from the board of health that the portage company is delivering massive amounts of trash and just and basic shoving massive amounts of paper and plastics into our, our into our plastic compactor without sorting it. Well, and, I will make one comment about that portage, people. Since that portage started last year, basically last year, a year before, I've been, I've been down to the Bartles Ferry Bridge and several rescues right down to the water path. I've been down to Conway Station all the way down to the river, access down the bottom there, and I have never, ever seen that area as clean as it is this year. You mentioned and you can thank straight. the Portage people for that. Yes. And you can thank them for it, and I think there'll be, uh, I think the water health will be shooting themselves in the foot if they stop them from bringing that rubbish in there, because if they stop them and they tell their people, don't bother picking up anymore, we're going to have one disgusting mess in Conway. But at least it ought to go in the yeah. dumpster, not into the, the paper compactor. Well, I don't know where it's getting dumped. That's, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on behalf of me. But, I, uh, quick um, about the, I know uh, that they're instructing their people to, to pick everything up, and, and they're, they're doing a wonderful job of it. She, she don't have to do that. She's just doing it to try to um, <clears throat> make her company look good. And, uh, and I think that I've heard that the Board of Health is grumbling about that. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, I would think the Board of Health better look very closely before they think about shutting her down on that one. Uh, I'm not proposing they shut her down, and I assume that if they're renting that property from the Boydens, along with that, would come permission to use the Conway dumpster. I don't know that, but I imagine. Well, you got to understand that the people that run the Portage Company also have parents that live in Conway. Uh-huh. So some of, the, some of the trash that they're bringing up there isn't just the portage companies picking up trash. Some of the trash that they're bringing up is from the parents' house because the parents do live in Conway. You, you, probably most of you didn't know that, but no, I they didn't. do. What are you going to say, Bob? Um, just to echo uh, Bob's comments, one thing I noticed that since the portage company came is the traffic along Reeds Bridge Road has decreased somewhat. Uh, although it's a favored path by a lot of people. Um, that road is used a lot for joggers, bicyclists. I walk it every day. Uh, I nearly got run over last week by a caravan of a dozen large pickup trucks, six feet apart, doing this kind of snake thing as fast as they could go down the road. And uh, I don't know where they came from or what they were doing, but um, it's become, every year for me, it's become more dangerous to walk on that road. I try and stay on there instead of walk on Barbell's Ferry Road. But um, the, the dust, um, the traffic, they stop at my corner, uh, they do burnouts and, you know, whatever else. Uh, but it's, it's, as long as people are tubing that volume there, there will be some issues there. You won't be able to totally fix it. Well, I really appreciate the conversation. Uh, yeah, I wasn't hoping that we were going to, you know, find a resolution we were going to vote on, but it just, you, you know, this, a couple of things that I did yeah. here that, that we could improve, you know, the, the one, you know, we have a town um, policy for our employees that if you are a first responder, but you work for a town department and there's a, a, an emergency call that you have get your department heads permission to go on the call, um, which 
on its face kind of makes sense a little bit. The department head should know where his, his or her employees are. Um, but you know, that, that maybe there should be a distinction between in-town calls and out-of-town calls. Mm -hmm. um, be, because in this particular instance, um, one, of the, in, one of the first responders whose assistance proved critical to the life-saving effort due to his uh, physical size, uh, you know, had to wait for a couple of minutes to, for, for, his, for, for his department head to get back in touch and respond that it was okay to go to this call. And that, um, you know, that that was unfortunate. And if that kid would have passed in those two minutes, that would have really been unfortunate. But um, in something like, you know, that, that we ought to be have, have some way to differentiate that there should be some calls that they can just automatically go to, that we ought to be able to recognize the seriousness of and not have to wait for verbal permission. Um, so, so that, Tom, that sounds like a good, uh, a good personnel policy issue, or where would I don't know where that would be, but we could talk about that. That'd be great. Um, was that comment to Tom? Yes. Yeah. Is Tom expected? Uh, yes, to I, I, I. I I, I think there is a distinction between in-town and out-of-town calls. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe Chief Baker can, uh, can elucidate that. Well, I, I will say that uh, even though we have a very uh, large number of firefighters, most of them work out of town during the day. So when we have fire calls in county or rescue calls, if that's what you want to call them, uh, we have very limited numbers, uh, like that kid child rescue. Uh, we ended up, let me think, there was, uh, there was just six of our people showed up that day, that afternoon to help that kid out. Um, and, and like, like, um, Phil just said, I mean, if, if, if that one town employee had, had, uh, had, had to take longer to get permission to leave, that would have been a lot more critical in that situation. Uh, it should be uh, set up automatically that any any fire or rescue calls uh, in town that the employee should be allowed to go. Uh, I know that we have already set up with the town employees and the, between the town employees and the fire department that they have to go off of one payroll and on to another during the daytime hours. Uh, that's already been established. Um, so, uh, that's already been, and it's been taken care of. I think it, it's, it's a, when I was in the department and I had several firefighters, of course I was a fire chief at the same time. I didn't have a, ever, ever never once questioned them that had to leave to go on a call in town. I think it was absolutely the utmost thing you can do. Even this orchard equipment across the street is good enough to any fire calls in the town of Conway to allow his people to leave and he continues to phase them too. And they, they live, in this, live in the spare of the moment. Matter of fact, that day they rescued a young child down there. Two of them, six people, were orchard equipment employees. That they, they just know the need for it in the county and they just go and do it. And I think that should be set up with our highway department at this time. Uh, and I don't want to get involved with it because, because of uh, relationships. But I think the board should very seriously look at that and address that as soon as possible. It's a great idea. Yeah. I tried to avoid mentioning the highway department in particular, <laughs> just because it, it applies to all departments, and I don't. It, want to see it, the department it, it was fairly clear, though, Phil. <laughs> okay. Well, to you maybe. Um, yeah. But, all right. So that's you know that's one thing to look at, and maybe we can do something about that. Um, Okay. Yeah, I'll be happy to look into that. Great. So is that a good enough? Is that a good discussion? We have work to do. Michael, do you think that was helpful to you? Yes, it was. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry to have uh, lost our internet connection while we were in the middle of that. But um, I would love to follow up with some of the specific issues that have been mentioned there, make it part of, you know, this compilation, because there's a lot of different stuff in a lot of different settings. And 
as has been said, it's not simple, but especially if we get additional state resources, which is our intention. Yeah. So a few yeah. days from now, you should be able to get the the audio recording of this on uh, FCAT. I don't know if you know about FCAT. It's it's a if you go to um, if you go to YouTube and look for FCAT Media, one word, FCAT Media, okay. and then you can find all, all of the Conway Select Board and Sunderland Select Board, all of our Select Board meetings that are now being held through Zoom are all put up, and you can actually watch this over again or listen to it okay. over again. I will, I so, will, and I'll be and, in touch with you, uh, you Bob, Bob Armstrong. Great. Great. Thank you all, bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, on to the next one. So uh, the next one is to vote on accepting the Bay State Forestry Service donation. So Janice, you want to talk about this or? or? Uh, excuse me, Bob, this is Robert. Yeah. Are you yeah. all done with me for the evening? We are, Robert. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Thanks, yeah. guys. You're, you're always me. welcome, you. but yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, this is Janet Shays, and I would like to speak briefly about that item. Um, as the uh, the Conservation Commission knows, and Tom Hutchinson knows, uh, we are preparing applications for invasive control work of, of the not, mostly the knotweed that's choking the river. And uh, we're proposing, we're gonna work with Lincoln Fish of Bay State Forestry who did such a fabulous job cleaning up the South River Meadow. Um, and there's some related issues. We'll talk about it, the other item or under new business. Um, but anyway, the fellow named um, Colin who works for Lincoln, <laughs> They have been up and Colin lives in town. His idea was if we're getting this work, we're, we're getting this work in Conway and we're trying to clean up the knotweed, which of course is all around. Um, what about the area by the covered bridge on 116 as you come into town? And that area is hardly visible anymore. It's where the millstone and the welcome, the Conway millstone welcome marker is. And so they, we were scrambling last week and they, the applicators offered to donate that to the town. Now that was to donate perhaps half an acre of the work. Um, and uh, the Friends of the South River have been scrambling and have had discussions. Michelle Torrey has done fabulous mapping for us. That area is about two acres. Um, so we would propose uh, other funding, including private donations for the remainder and accept uh, if all the applications are approved, which is, which is you know a big if and timing is a big question but but if if these other projects get approved um then i recommend that you the town gratefully accept that work so this is just very specifically we would be voting on whether to accept the uh the forest service donation of their time and effort and chemicals or well yes apparently for this item um uh, yes, you know, just because it was listed, that's sort of how it came up. I mean, Bob, you originally, I shared it with you as uh, yeah. con con members, and you said, "Oh, don't select board have to approve of it?" Oh, sure, yes. Well, and then it got on the agenda. So that's just this particular well, agenda item. So my understanding is that that's the other item that, since that's on town property, we would have to give, you know, the open space committee that you know i'll say permission or our approval to do this project on town land but that feels to me like a different um a, a different question as to whether we would accept their donation yes yes and that other question sort of the larger question um i sent to tom for the agenda 
and you all uh, is, and, and he said that that actually needs to be discussed under new business so no no it's going to be discussed under not anticipated not within anticipated. 48 hours yes but, and that yeah. is that is on the agenda yes. but i'm just trying to say i'm just trying to understand this issue which is not that issue in other words right. that issue is that th the project is on town land and the open space committee is looking to the select board to say yes we would embrace that project yes but this request is that we accept the the offer of a donation to help pay for it yes uh, this is a phenomenal offer and i yes. I, 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 I hereby jump to accept it um <clears throat> so uh you know that 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 actual when, when you know that is one of the entry vistas into town and it is sort of um, a minor civic embarrassment that it has left been left to decay to the extent that it is that it is all invasive species it's all like real garbage trees and stuff that have, that that obscure the view and it should be an amazing view um, and so whatever can be done to improve that um, and Janet I would actually like to speak with you off camera to discuss another very minor funding source but I believe um, that th there is a, a specific, like just to the tune of a thousand or two, um, that might have a got to install a park bench uh, uh, as a as as an, as, as a, a requirement for that funding. But um, I'll talk to you off off record about wonderful, that. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and then we can discuss the the bigger project. I mean, basically, your accepting accepting of this donation is really kind of contingent upon the okay. larger project. So if we've talked about this sure. enough, and it sounds, yeah. I mean, I see Erica nodding her head, Phil, and you're saying you're, yes. you're enthusiastic. Yeah. I move to accept the donation. I'll second it. Yeah. So, so we say aye. I aye. see everybody says aye. Great. So, yeah. I, I mean, I don't see it as necessary for us to talk about this to death. In other words, this is fairly straightforward. And just like you say, Phil, this is a very generous, wonderful thing to do. I agree. And I would encourage them to cut everything they can and give us our <laughs> feedback. Um, so, yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's the other half of the project. So, yeah. uh, um, Tom, would it be okay if we talked about the items not anticipated, talked about that project next? Uh, the board can, uh, can do whatever it likes with its agenda. <laughs> So I'll propose that r rather than go on to a bunch of other things and then come back to this, that the other item that we have on the agenda is that the board is will it, you know is in support of the open space committee, you know, doing the preparatory work to to do to do. I'll say this is the project that's important because this is on our land. This is on our town-owned land. The other project, the other work has more on is um, on, on private property. But part of the other part of the other the big piece of this project is on town on land at the covered bridge. Yes, that's yes. true. But we were asked by the Conservation Commission. This is Michelle Turi, um to um, submit one permit application for all the work on the South River. So that's why Janet was saying it's sort of contingent what we are going to write up, you know. Um, okay, so that's great. So, you, so you may be submitting it as one pro one one project to the conservation commission. Yes. But a piece of that is looking to the select board to say Absolutely. yes, this the select board would embrace doing that on our town property. On town property. Yeah. Yes, and but and there's some related technicalities with the permit with the application which i need to explain so it okay. is it is and uh, the conservation commission got the draft um uh, of it and it is one notice of intent and the friends of the south river are applying but the property owner, because we had to select for the main line, the main property owner, and that's shown as the town of Conway. Um, and so if, if you approve, then my request here is 
that you authorized, and I propose Tom Hutchinson as the town administrator with your supporting vote to sign as the property owner. Now, this is a very long and complex, I'm at like 12, 15 pages of the explanation um, and attachments, and it lists the other property owners. I will brief, try to, okay, so it, we're, we're bundling this. Um, and I don't know how the state and the CONCOM is ultimately going to prove and handle it. But uh, there's, there's a, little, a little piece in the South River Meadow that hadn't been treated before. And then there are eight landowners up along uh, north of the meadow with small parcels. And they want their, and they're going to pay for their uh, treatments. Uh, and then the big piece is this two, two acres around the bridge, approximately. And then there's another piece up by the Cooker, Cook and Tucker Old Reservoir, which is really important habitat. And that landowner, Jim Maxwell, Manuel. Manuel, Manuel. Is, um, also wants to participate. So, you know what uh, we've got permissions we've got written permissions from all of them and anyway that's the bundling of the application so i'm not sure what you're asking us but i you know i'm personally not comfortable saying that conway is going to declare itself the owner of all of this private property. no the, the, all the all the attachments indicate who owns what That's all. I saw that pretty clearly. That's the way I saw it. Um, I, I, the, the form, I mean, for, first of all, I, you know, this was sent to us at 4.20 or 4.15 p.m. today. And it, Janet, it was like 55 pages total. And I'm still buried in the, in the, uh, the, the financial stuff that was also sent to us in the afternoon. And I, um, I, I tried to skip through it to figure out what was most important, but um, mm -hmm. I didn't really get to really read the stuff like I normally would. Um, so I, um, but, but I, I did see that the, that the space for declaring the landowner was like a little box like this. Um, and that, yeah, and we, we checked, the, we, there's a, a check box and it's checked if there's more than one property owner. Yeah. And I have not received that. additional instructions on how exactly that is supposed to be handled. Um, but if we vote that we support this, are you saying that that you will look to Tom to take an active role in this project? No, I'm looking for someone to sign as someone to sign for the property owner for the largest property owner, the town of Conway. And that would be Tom on behalf of the select board. That's the way it's supposed to be. I think. Only no, normally they would be split off into each individual owner and submitted to the Conservation Commission that way. Except that the Conservation Commission asked us to submit them all together. They may, I don't know. I haven't talked to Bruton about this. I, I mean, I did talk to the Bruton to, to, ex, to the extent that he said he doesn't believe that the select board needs to take any action on this whatsoever. And, and I, I'm not in agreement of that either, but so, well, it, 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 you know, it is, it is unfortunate the timing of this is really compressed. You know, normally we spend months developing these. Yeah. And in this case, I don't, you know, it's hard to get guidance or advice because the con, concom only responds to in meetings that something's right in front of them, you know, and that maybe, you know, that's the way it is and it takes months and, so that's, oh, you put that down, that's the wrong answer. Come back two weeks later with however, you know. So so it's completely, you know, it's not clear. And I think the best approach, the best hope for getting some of this cleaned up is to submit the application. Uh, and the window for treating is is really closing. Right. Um, and, that's, and that's the dilemma. Now, you know, we, we can always pull out. I don't think this obligates you, the town, or even any of the other property owners. It doesn't obligate them to, to 
execute. So Bob, what, what is your concern exactly if we were, if, if Tom were to sign this on behalf of the town of Conway, what is your concern as far as the other property owners? Well, I'm surprised that Bruton is saying that he doesn't want individual, individual proposals, individual NOIs. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, he doesn't want no, no, normally each owner would, would, would present, a, you know, a separate proposal to the Conservation Commission. And but it, apparently it, it is possible to do a group application. The form provides for it and the circuit writer, um, what's his name, Janet? I forgot. Mark Stinson. Yeah, Mark Stinson, in conversation with um, Bruton, yeah. suggested this. So, and one of the reasons, why, one of the reasons why the group application is so valuable is because there's so much permitting, and then at this more advanced. NO, NOI level, these, these properties, is what, what is not going to happen. They're, each individual owner of half an acre is not going to go through this, right. uh, all those forms uh, by themselves. Um, well, uh, uh, other than that, Eric, I don't have an issue. So, so you me, know, uh, go ahead. The, the concern that I have is that, that, that when, that this, this was, you know, you, we, you did the uh, remove, we got the removal, uh, the, the removal of invasive species grant a year or two ago, and, and a bunch of the work was done. And there were some people that in town that were opposed to that project um, and, and are opposed to all, all use of, uh, you know, uh, of uh, chemical agents to do removal of anything. Um, and it's their property. I mean, you know, they can do it, you know. Right. Yeah, or they might have just been opposed to doing anything. Yeah, that you know, it's right, and and it is a problem that that we really need to treat everything. So 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 Janet, you're wonderful to be orchestrating this project to get as much as possible. Uh, thank thank you. What we did before the work on the meadow uh, occurred was we had a special public information session, and we invited everybody around there and everybody we knew who was concerned and we had a good exchange and dialogue and explanation of methods and so forth and however this works out you know we would plan to do to do the same in some fashion yeah okay. and i what, the, the thing between now and then that has occurred is all of the concern that people had about Eversource and the power lines between here and Ashfield and everywhere else around the county being cleared through the use of herbicides. And, um, and then of course, we on the select board learned last week when we received that, the copy of the order that uh, the state DEP issued to, to Eversource. And a lot of pe people in town don't know that Eversource um, in that project that they were doing above Bardwell's Ferry, the massive power line project that they had received they had put together a big herbicide plan, um, et cetera, et cetera. And that uh, we didn't know in town that the state had pulled all of those permits because Eversource um, broke state law and, and, and didn't comply with their own plans. Um, and, and in fact, illegally sprayed for years and they had to admit that they didn't communicate with their contractor and et cetera. And the pat, so, and, and Eversource destroyed almost a full acre of a uh, threatened, uh, uh, what was the species? Bittersweet, a threatened bittersweet species that uh, uh, was destroyed by Eversource, almost an acre of it, um, so that they could build that pad for all the heavy equipment that goes up and down there. Um, and that they were allowed to keep the pad uh, and that you know basically all that Eversource, well, not all, but the main point of what Eversource was ordered to do is to really, really obey the law this time, pinky swear promise. And, and, and every source is allowed to operate. They don't, they don't come to the Conservation Commission for permission. And that's all state land. Yeah. Um, but I guess uh, you but, know, what I'm getting at is that, you know, just because a company says that, th that, that they're gonna comply with X, Y, and Z regulation, um, we just saw in Eversource's case 
that the internal controls between Eversource and that company did not exist. Um, Eversource claims that they didn't, that they weren't aware that of the threat in Bittersweet, and blah, blah, blah. But that's sort of their job to be aware of all that. And um, e e <laughs> um, so, so all of that is sort of what has taken place between then and now. And, um, you know, it's, well, you can, we, can, we, can all be, we can all be assured that the Conway Conservation Commission uh, will be watching this very carefully. And um, we have a lot of confidence in the, uh, this particular applicator. He knows every single plant there is. Um, and it's very targeted and it's legal. So, so I'll make a motion that we that we uh, approve this project. I'm not sure how to state this motion correctly because I'm not sure what you're asking for, Janet. Maybe you I, could help here. Uh, well, I think it was in the email. It, I, our, the request is for the select board to ratify the application authorizing uh, Tom Hutchison to sign for the town. Sounds good to me. I don't know what the word I don't know what ratify means in this case. I mean, it's really up to the Conservation Commission, but we would be willing to to ratify that we'll sign for the town. Yeah. I think we have to state clearly, though, what the application is for. Well, I think the application itself states clearly what the application is for. Uh, yeah, a motion should be, uh, the motion for the record should state what the application is for, I think. But, okay. Um, so it's a... Uh, Well, it, you know, it was invasive eradication on the, uh, at the, uh, along the South River, including the Conway, the covered bridge, and uh, some properties to be determined in the future, because we don't know yet. Well, it's the properties that are identified in the, uh, in the notice of intent. Yeah, it's in the, uh... Okay. So and it's, and it's, it's a grant application, right? No, it's not a no, grant application. No. It's just a permit application. And it, it's as defined in the notice of intent that you're authorizing Tom to sign. Okay. So, so the application is for who to pay for it? There's no information on the who's paying for it in the application. It, 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 it's not requiring the town to pay for it. It's just notice of intent. Right. To that's, that's the part that I was getting to try to clarify okay. there. All right. Okay, okay, yeah. It's got multiple funding sources from. Right. Listen, from all of that, do you think you could, you could put that in the notes? <laughs> yes, I, I, will, I will help with that. Okay. Okay, thanks. Sir. Right. Still moved. Okay. Second. I'll vote aye. I assume that yep. if you second and Phil moved it, that those are unanimous. Great. Okay, we still have more to go. Thank you very much, Janet. Thank you. And Wendy and and uh, and Michelle. Thank you. Thanks. So, Jan Warner, are you still here, Jan? She's probably off washing dishes or something. I'm here. Oh, thank you, Jan. So, I'm so here. We're, we're, um, well, and maybe this is Lee. I don't know. You here working with Lee for for approval of her preliminary tax rate? Is that? Uh, no, I I can uh, I can talk a little bit about that. Um, okay. I was hoping that Lee Lee would be on by now. Uh, she's trying to get the uh, the assessors to approve uh, a letter, which is a very technical letter, which has to go to the Department of Revenue to request a preliminary tax rate. And uh, the reason uh, this is the case is because we don't believe that the uh, final cherry sheets for FY21 will be out by the time we need to send our first billing, our first real estate tax billing. So uh, what you need is to approve the letter that we get from the assessors, but we do not at this point have a letter from the assessors. I, I don't know what the delay is. I was expecting Lee to be on the call. Um, 
this means that we may need to call another meeting of the select board to approve the letter um, at relatively short notice over the next week. Uh, so I think we can skip this for now, uh, unless Jan has another opinion, and uh, and go on to the next item, which Jan is here for. Which is Jan's, right. right. Yes. No, I don't have another opinion. That's fine with me to skip it. I think you need you need Lee and you need the assessor's vote to begin with. Yeah. Okay, we'll table that temporarily. Table that for now. But please don't reschedule for Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday afternoon after four o'clock. Is uh, that's uh, school school committee fun time? Oh my lord! Mornings are good. Yeah. Okay. So Jan, now we're on. You, you, I know that you wanted to talk about expanding office space. Well, I didn't. I didn't expect to leave the group. I oh, okay. okay. Well. But um, I, I did bring it to the forefront because the property next door came up for sale, and you know I realize it's very difficult for a municipality to act on a quick sale like that. So we didn't have any warning. We don't have any plan, and uh, maybe it's not the best idea. It's just one of those things that for me it's really hard to pass up on because the property. Uh, that I'm talking about is right next door to the town hall. So it could easily join up with, you know, connecting the buildings, connecting the parking lot. There's so many options that the town could explore to expand if we had a property next door. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have yeah, any. That, and that's next door to the happen. town office. Yeah. Yes, to so the town office. Has that property been sold? Not that I know of. Not that I know of, but um, yeah, so I was, I sent a letter to the select board uh, just to, to make note of some of the issues we have because, you know, select board members have changed over and I've been here since 2005 and we've been pushing for this since then. Our office space is terribly crowded and inefficient and actually in many areas non-compliant with some of the things that our um, agencies ask us to do. Number one is, you know, locking up our space. So we have a town clerk, a treasurer, you know, um, tax collector that we, we can't lock up our, our, well, we lock up in files, but we can't lock up our office at night. So we host many meetings. The public is, is throughout our buildings in the evenings and our space is unprotected. So it's it's really um, you know it's not a great thing. So I mean I can I can go on and list a few of our issues. You know, um, as for the select board, one of one of your biggest issues is your meeting space. You know, right right now in the middle of COVID, that's kind of become non-existent. But your table in the front is crowded with three desks and you know file cabinets and and junk and um, <laughs> So I, I just I just think our town can do so much better for space and we need more space. Our, our building is tiny. My office is, it, it's a hallway office uh, with a bathroom literally uh, six feet from my assistant's desk. And, you know, again, we can't, can't lock up. People pass through and uh, since COVID, it's, it's become even, you know, more obvious of our need for space because we, we just can't make the space so we have to do staggered office hours. The front office people have to pass through the hallway. Our town clerk is in a you know an ancient kitchen. <laughs> so um, and you know our police department as well has some limitations. I've often heard that they they can't bring in a person that they've arrested to detain. They have to use other services because they're on the second floor. Um, let's see. So uh, <laughs> the condition of our building actually needs some help too. A long time ago, I put in an article to have the flooring all replaced because we have, if you look under Tom's desk, you'll see that there's a hole in the flooring that leads down to the plywood. 
um, the carpets are in ill repair and and that article passed but the, the select board actually wouldn't let me spend it so it, it went away but you know we we have a very aged bathroom that you know it's it's tight it's old fixtures it really needs updating and our outside landscaping is um, you know we have weeds growing through the bushes and very difficult for uh, handicapped people to assess our building as well. So uh, on many, many levels, there's, there's issues that we need to address to expand and improve upon our office space. Um, just, just because we hopefully take pride in our community and want to have a nice office space and also to attract uh, valuable employees. You know, we want a nice place to work too. A number of months ago, before the pandemic, uh, Tom was putting together a, a committee to talk about space. I, I mean, should we be yes, reactivating uh, and, uh, that? Um, that? That is actually, that would actually be an alternative to this. Um, and, and I unfortunately have not been able to move forward with that partly because it started off, you know, during budget season and town meeting season, and then there was there were the delays associated with that, and all of the the really um, uh, well, you know, we, we we kept meeting weekly. There were there was there was a whole bunch of stuff that we had to deal with uh, as as the pandemic came in, and the budget was delayed and things like that. So so that has not moved forward. But this would be something different. That was based on the possibility of renovating the town hall. And I know that uh, Phil especially had uh, an objection to that. And this would be, um, this, this, would, this is an opportunity for the, for the select board to say that you would consider an alternative to that approach, which is buying another piece, buying another property. Uh, one that was uh, presumably um, appropriate for the need. Uh, so, so this would be an entirely separate approach from renovation, um, which is fine. Um, I have, I have some doubts that we could we could uh, move properly in time to to get the building next door if that one did turn out to be suitable. Uh, but it is an interesting test case. Um, it, buying property is is um, quite an involved process for a town, and it does involve a town meeting vote. Two thirds, so, right? Um, Two thirds. Uh, I believe so. I, I'd have to check, but it's it. There's there's a lot that has to go into it. But if if you did adopt this policy, then I could work on a request for proposals. Which is one of the one of the steps that's normal to take. Now, a property can be identified as unique. Um, that is, that no other property fits the town's needs as well. Um, I think it's a marginal case to make in terms of this particular property. Um, yes, it would share a parking space, um, and that's probably the most compelling feature for it. Um, it it is marginally doable, but I think the overarching question is whether the select board would like to consider the approach of buying another property either instead of or with, with some, um, some smaller renovation to be done to existing buildings. So can, can I respond to a little bit? Um, so you know, generally, like I, I, I've tried to sort of uh, hold the line on on embarking on projects without knowing the where we're, where they're going to end. And so, like I, I've I've never been a fan of doing a big study for a project when we don't really know uh, the dollar amounts when, when we're not clear about what we're willing to spend on that project after that study. And so, to to me, so. Yeah, and that, but but at the same time, all during that time when we when the we were talking about the renovating and the lift and and everything else for that building, I was never aware that there was a dedicated fund um, that could only be used for the purchase of real estate. 
and, and, uh, for, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jan, but it's like not, close to around 90,000? In that range, yes. Yeah, and, and so, so my, for, first of all, my, my, my question, and it's really, it's uh, good that we're talking about this right now, because my question is, can town meeting by a two thirds vote um, amend that to include the, the alterations to existing town property? Not quite far. Like, uh, I, I don't know that offhand. I mean, but that would be because if, you know, for $90,000, you could do a lot of good with to that building. And maybe that, that, that that's money um, that construction can, rather than acquisition. Right. So it can be used to put on an addition or it can be used for uh, new new construction or new, it has to be like an acquisition. It can't be a renovation. Renovation. But we can go to town meeting and ask them to change that, right? No. No? No. No. Those special revenue funds are defined on how they're to be used and it's not up to town meeting, it's, it's state legislation. Mm. Be, be, because I mean, you know, the way I think about it, the 90, the one real, reasonable way that you can be confident that you'll get a two-thirds vote at town meeting is to say here's this money it's getting it's being paid for your your assessment won't go up um, yeah but it has to be used for acquisition and the purpose behind that is to keep towns from selling off their assets um and putting them into a renovation so they don't they don't want towns to shrink themselves they want towns to grow Because I'm not, I, I, again, I, I did speak with some of the uh, the tradespeople in town and about the condition of that building and had anybody really worked on the systems there. And I was told that it it's not really suitable for us. That the roofs that the, there's roof whatever that I don't I, I don't want to talking about the town hall. Yeah, no, no, for for the 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 Greenwood House. Oh, the green. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do you know what they're asking for that? Yeah, they're they're an insane amount of money for that. Which okay, is the other, well, that's close enough. <laughs> the the the, uh, the relations that are that are that have put it up for sale live quite a ways away from here, and um, uh, you know, so so that that they, uh, uh you know, that 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 it's listed for oh well over three hundred. Yeah, it was close to four hundred thousand. And its sales price will be below two hundred. Um, so, yeah, you yeah, I just, I find, you know, this, this stuff comes up quickly and it's, it's really hard to pass by because you, you can't, you can't go backwards. Once it's gone, it's gone. I mean, yeah, it's, this is, it's, it's a hard road, you know, a hard road to hoe when the financial certain situation is still uncertain and everything else. Yeah. We are going to have a special town meeting in the fall where we're going to get to have our budget meeting all over again. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and, you know, if, if the feds come through with state and local money and, and school money, maybe it's, maybe, maybe we'll be all right and maybe it's doable, but the way it looks now is that it's going to be a grim year. Um, so, the, the, the reason that I mentioned, you know, Tom's committee was it had to do with renovating property we already own, and you know, the second floor of the town hall is is a lot of almost wasted space right now. And there, I have seen. I think there was Peter Jeswald's possible proposal of how we might make office space up there, and it feels like that would go a long way toward solving the problem. And I understand there's the problem of the rag shag parade and, and Halloween, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah. those it, events it, happen once a year and we're, we're working in these conditions every day. It's that's right. hard for me to swallow. I mean, you know, I, I'd like to think that I, if, 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 if the price lowers and if there's, if it becomes like an opportunity that, 
seems too good to pass up. I'd like to think that we're nimble enough as a town that we could do a, a town meeting posted on the shortest notice legally possible and that we could act in that way if it's, um, but you know. But we'd have to have a plan. We couldn't, we couldn't just go to town meeting and say we want to buy that building next door because we might be able to do something with it. So we'd have to act very quickly and have a plan and um, yeah. I mean, I, I'd be hard pressed to find anybody in town that thinks that that, that house is worth over 200,000. So if my, my initial thought is that if we, as a group propose purchasing it for more than that, that we would be, there'd be pitchforks and torches and, uh, yeah. that they would not go over well. But um, may, maybe there's a realtor that, in town or people in town that know more than I do, but um, I've been in that house. It to start the conversation with the realtor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I want, there's a, we sure have enough of them in town. So Jane, what, what I hear is that you are, you are requesting that the board adopt a policy that we be willing to consider purchasing a property in town that could be used well, for additional I, office space. Yeah, I just don't want to be forgotten. I want the board to know that, that the employees in the town office are terribly cramped. We have terrible conditions. We can't lock up our stuff. We, we actually have a very dangerous stairway to upstairs. We have a bathroom on top of our desk. You know, it's very undesirable. And I want the staff board not to forget about that and to, and to Think about a plan on how we're going to go forward. I don't want to. I don't want it to fall on the back shelf. You know, we 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 got the highway garage done, and that was a priority, and that's that's great. I just I want to I want to keep you guys thinking about the town office space. And I'll send around the uh, the rules, the state law on um, acquiring real estate, just so everybody's on the same page there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, you know, just a, just another situation. I mean, I just I was just looking at Lisa over there, and I haven't seen her in a long time. But right. you know, poor Lisa, the back of her chair is like literally a foot away from the back of the accountant's chair. It's he doesn't complain much, but they're really tight, and and it's actually one of the accountants. Um, standards that they're supposed to have their own office space and and we throw them in the middle of our select board meeting room with three other people two other people so i just i just want and you to he's, think about that. he's often still there as we're starting our select board meetings <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, everything you said is like dead on and uh you know i i am sorry for you and everybody else that has to work there uh, Oh, don't be sorry. We're we're happy to work there. I don't mean to say that. I just, I just we could use a better working space. And um, and just to to bring it up again, the the outside, you know, is a little. It's much easier fix. We need to do something with our landscaping. Yeah. Uh, somebody could put on an article to replace the bushes and make a nice sidewalk. Like just tidy up the front of it. But in yeah, some, um, is, is there money that we could spend fix. doing that? that we have uh, i mean uh, yes i have had people complain to me about about the appearance about the yeah. door that's got a, maybe the, even a broken window or a crack there's in. a screen door that's yeah. fallen off the, yeah. the lock yeah. on the front door doesn't work uh you have to you know, hold hold the handle down to unlock the door um yeah we, we do have a uh landscaping contract which right now is pretty much just a mowing contract we've been yeah. of course trying to keep the cost of that down um the problem is between and, between the mowing and the building is where the problem is yeah. Well, yeah, i mean even the, a nice the, little the, pot the, of flowers out front it just it says a lot to the community what the people think about their their town space and it's very simple inexpensive way you know, you, you, you drive through some towns and they put flowers on their bridges and, and hang pots from their lamp posts. And it says a lot about a community that, that, that this town cares about, you know, with their downtown. And I think we need to care about our town office and show our people that we, we're a proud town. Yeah, I agree. 
I agree. So if, well, let's, it'll it'll cost some money, but uh, if someone agreed to volunteer to, 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 to donate some uh, some some floor vases and everything and, and hanging baskets out front, um, who would we assign to water? Uh, I think the garden club might actually take that on. I think the problem is is changing what we have now, maybe getting rid of the juniper. Do, do we really need the tree? Um, things like that. Yeah, you need a professional company to look at it and put in a simple fix. It's it's really not that hard. It's, it's There's someone in town? So that comes under the uh, that comes under the building maintenance budget line which has been kept level for uh, for many years and that has been a point of pride uh, but i can uh, <laughs> i can always uh, ask for a quote the last time the signpost fell over uh it was down for about a year and i and i Came out on a Sunday with my post hole digger and dug the hole myself to put in a new post. That but, sounds like fun way to me. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Tom, could could you put out a request for quotes? That would be great. That would be a start. Well, the question is still uh, quotes for doing what? So I think we need to uh, explore some options, but I'm I'm fine with moving forward with uh, with that general idea. Roosting up the town office, the landscaping. Well, no, you, we we have, we have uh, I happen to know a, a landscape designer really well, and maybe I can get a a, a plan volunteer to draw it up, and then we can can pass the plan around and then make modifications to it and then decide to do it. We should start with a plan. Jan's right. It's probably going to be in the price range where you'd need to get three quotes. I don't think you'd need to put it out to bid, but three quotes and you can pick your best one. All right. All right. Yeah, uh, Phil, e even, even having a, a template uh, would help. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, if, if, if the price is free, uh, I say go for it and uh, let me know. I, I can, you know, I can pick up the ball if you if you start it rolling. All right. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. We we do want to keep you happy and working here. So <laughs> it's not that hard. I am happy. That's good. Sometimes it probably seems like those are two mutually exclusive things, but <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Uh, so, so let's see. So we 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 did approve the other regional representatives. Um, we did did we pass? Did we actually vote on the support for the Asheville Massworks grant, or did we put that off? Yeah, we tabled that. Um, we we, we that? did, but we need to cover the regional representatives. Uh, okay, that we we didn't. Okay, so. There are a couple of boards uh, that uh, FERCOG boards that we have a representative that goes to and for the planning board, it's actually not Tom, it is me. And I would be willing to do that again, unless you, the, Erica, if you would like to do it. This is the board, as I mentioned, that has excellent pizza. So just to make it. So uh, why does it say Tom Hutchison in the agenda if it's actually you? Uh, because Lisa copied this off uh, oh. uh, a, a form that where where Tom did it before me. Um, I don't know if I'm prepared to take that on right now. I feel like I'm okay. a little too green. <laughs> That's okay. I enjoy going to it and and so good. And I, yeah, well, hasn't had pizza since it, the pandemic. It, no virtual pizza. It says. I, th I think it's um, eight meetings a year. Um, might even be, have been cut down to six, but it's uh, it's not many. It's the fourth Thursdays, and it is a good way of getting to know the more um, regional issues. Um, that's just a basic introduction. 
but we'll be doing this next year too. So if you want to say I'll think about it for next year, that would be okay. So, Sounds great. Okay, so I'll 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 do that one, and uh, and we do have somebody who volunteered last year to be the tr on the transit authority, and he's very happy to do it again. Don Walker, he's very interested in bus service and especially in electrifying bus service. But mm -hmm. so so. If we could, uh, I'll, I'll move that uh, I'll be the rep for the planning board and Don will be the rep for the transit authority. A second. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Tom, is there another item not anticipated? I think, I think we had one yes. more to do. Well, we have the sign-ons for the school meals. And, and I actually have um, several. They're, 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 fairly, they're fairly small. Um, but we, we did send around that uh, letter requesting the select board to sign on um, to a letter regarding uh, school lunches or school meals. Um, and Bob, uh, you wanted this to be on the agenda. Yeah. I'm that was a while back, and I'm having a hard time remembering what it was about. But so it, this, so I, it was so a lot of that we each signed individually. It wasn't necessary for us to sign as a board. Yeah, I mean, t t technically, the, um, any school policy stuff is 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 the jurisdiction of the school committee. Um, but not that anybody really cares. Uh, certainly, the school committee doesn't in this instance. Uh, but. Uh, the the, uh, the you know uh, w w the the way that 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 USDA regulation and the waiver of it it didn't really impact us too much either way at Conway Grammar School it had more of an impact on Frontier and did drive down costs at Frontier I believe uh, uh, but not terribly significantly this is the old you know do you have to give everybody an apple on the lunch tray, even though you end up throwing 90% of the apples away, kind of a thing, um, if you remember that. But uh, it did cause the grammar school, I believe, to have to stop serving ice cream on Fridays. But, um, but uh, yeah, this is a, a USDA policy, not a, uh, not a school policy, but it's USDA school nutrition program, so. Yeah. Does this have to do with providing lunches during the pandemic or for kids that are at home? I, I, that's what I'm not sure. I yeah, the school's been doing that and they've been, they've yeah. had to do that. Well, um, so we don't have to vote on this, This, uh, but I, uh, uh, I just wanted to have Tom mention it here in, here in the meeting and to remind us that they're asking us to read, read the letter and see if individually we're willing to support it. So it's, it's up to you. And we don't need to do it as a select board. Not as a board, no. Okay. And no. they're not even they're not even asking us to do it as a board. They're asking us to do it as individuals. Yeah. Tom, um, you want to talk about your update? Uh, no, I have some more items that were not anticipated. Oh, okay. Um, the first is that uh, Pat Lynch has requested that the town forgive uh, the rent for the Sunday Serenity Group, um, and I think that's that's entirely fair. They haven't been able to use the room, so I um, I would propose that I just um, let them know that uh, they don't have to pay for what they didn't use, and um, and you know as long as they don't use it, they don't have to pay for it. I uh, don't move. That. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. So so I heard, did I hear a move in a second? So, yeah. I, so that's unanimous. We all say aye. Okay, good. Um, something, uh, uh, Kimberly sent me a note just after she got off. Uh, she's wondering whether uh, the board would allow Bob to sign the, uh, the um, contract that was approved for the uh, MVP uh, program. Uh, just by himself in order to get it moving quickly so we didn't have to wait for all the signatures. What MVP program? Is it ours the, the, or? The one that Kimberly discussed that you just uh, approved the uh, the contract for. Oh. For the culvert so, work. Yeah. Those programs. So can, can, can Bob just sign that 
uh, by himself for the board. That's fine with me. I would with me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, I'll take that as a as a motion from Erica and a second from Phil there and who's nodding. Bye. Okay. Great. Yeah. And uh, and the last thing is I um, as uh, Chief Baker was leaving, um, he sent me he he handed me a list of some firefighters who um, apparently had not been appointed. And uh, I'd just like to read their names. And if you could uh, make those appointments, I'm sure you'd appreciate it a great deal. Uh, we, and I, it's, it's not clear to me whether the appointments weren't made or whether they just didn't get the letters, uh, but it would not hurt to appoint them mm. twice and we need to appoint them. So. Um, these are David Shaw, Kyle Stas, um, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce the name, and uh, three junior firefighters, Kyle Baker, Benjamin Makache, and Joseph Kirkulonis. Oh, I would, would like those appointments made. Point them. A second. Aye. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's uh, all I have. There can't, there can't be that many fire departments in the state that have three generations from one family serving in it. <laughs> and also that are just about at their maximum allowed capacity of firefighters. Yeah, really. I think Ashfield has three and we have 30 something. Yeah. So. That's a whole nother thing. It is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But Bob deserves a lot of credit for for the junior fireman program and for how many firemen we have. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So do you have an update, Tom? Uh, why, yes, I do. Um, I so. A little bit of committee news. The Conservation Commission is handling a request from the Highway Department to remove some beaver dams on Maple Street. There's a large culvert that Pumpkin Hollow Brook flows through, and the beavers have built several dams below the culvert. The culvert is about half full because of the dams. So there's an emergency process to let that happen quickly, and we're hoping that can happen before the storm uh, tomorrow night. In departmental news, reopening has been going smoothly with no problems reported with any visitors to town offices. The state has allocated some of the federal CARES money to assist local school districts in opening, though as we've heard, there is still uncertainty about when classrooms will reopen and how. Um, in related news, the Deerfield Board of Health has voted a policy for face coverings in schools. At the superintendent's request, I forwarded it to Conway's Board of Health for town backup so Darius doesn't have to rely on just the school's policy. Uh, the Department of Energy Resources has released final rules for the new SMART program that double the program's capacity, adding 1,600 megawatts, which will enable more municipalities to develop solar projects with state support. The rules also increase a financial incentive for public entities developing solar from two cents to four cents per kilowatt hour. Perhaps this development will help spur the revival of the town's energy committee, which is no longer functional. The Department of Revenue says, while critical information from the federal government is still needed in order to finalize a full fiscal year budget for the Commonwealth, the baker Polito administration and the legislature are committing to no less than the fiscal year 2020 level of funding for unrestricted general government aid and chapter 70 education aid as a baseline amount for fiscal year 21 funding. We received our baseline unrestricted general government aid, also known as UGA, and Chapter 70 numbers, which are indeed level funded from last year. Chapter 70 remains at $626,464, and Chapter 
and UGA remains at $189,777,000. Frontier is scheduled to get $2,855,535 in Chapter 70 funding. Some communities will get an adjustment for inflation and enrollment, but Conway and many others will not, as we can be kept at foundation through level funding. That's really good news uh, for everybody. The state legislature is leaving open the possibility of formal sessions for the rest of the calendar year instead of breaking for campaigning the end of July. Various major pieces of legislation may be refined, including climate change, police reform, health care, the transportation bond bill. Um, the economic development bond bill did just pass. Uh, and, of course, the full fiscal year 21 state budget. That's unusual that they would stay in formal session after the end of July. The forest stewardship consultants are planning to have a draft plan for presentation and review on, at your next meeting on August 17th. They will then seek public feedback on the plan and revise it as necessary into a final plan based on residents and the select board's input. And just as a final note, the warrants which you approved are here and ready to sign at the town office. Great. So I just, Go ahead. So I just thought, you know, the, the, the state budget numbers that Tom was just referring to, I thought were unexpectedly, um, uh, you know, the, 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 they were no, the, they were not worst case scenarios. So, and you know, specifically that your frontier budget and union 38 budget committees had, uh, had, had planned for worse numbers. So, um, uh, you know, but, but the other shoe really hasn't dropped on, you know, that the governor, that the traditionally where they've given you with one hand, they've taken back with the other. And until we know, like, what the regional transportation numbers are and things like that, you know, that easily that could be cut to an extent that is still takes us right back to worst case scenario. So, um, but, but this is uh, less than, less than worst case scenario at this point and it, it being the year 2020 is really good news. You because were not predicting that we, they would level fund it for little chance. So that feels like right. right, and um, you know, it's level funding is bad. Level funding is that it's like free cash; it's not real. Level funding is a big budget cut, um, but uh, and that's because you have fixed costs that increase regardless, like labor and um, like contracts, things like that, and so it's bad. But the you know. We 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 had we 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 had we had been planning for five to ten percent cut, so that was good. Uh, good. But twenty twenty is still a horrible year. <laughs> concerns of the selectmen, they, uh, Erica. Do you have any concerns, Phil? Any concerns? I do not. Uh, that we haven't talked about yet, anyway. <laughs> well, this was this was it was nice to pick up the Greenfield recorder today, and it was the first day in. Uh, over a week where there had not been the need for a, a, a Conway column in the editorial page. So let's hope that can continue. Yes. Tom, is there any mail? Uh, nothing substantial, no. Okay. Any announcements? Any, do you have any announcements, Erica? I do not. Well, anything we haven't talked about yet? Well, just the announcements were that the grammar that the grammar school and Frontier could use um, if people have really have, have picnic tables in good shape, um, and you're willing to drop them off and pick them up uh, um, later. They really need them. The grammar school and the, you know the 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 uh, Frontier is going to be uh, renting something like ten to twelve significantly sized tents. So the, what we're asking, there, there's a lot of people in town that know people and, and have connections with things like tent rental companies. Um, and so if you, are, if you are one of those people or know of one of those people, 
please have them call Darius Modesto, the superintendent, and uh, and or Kirsten Gordon, the principal, because um, the grammar school needs to need, need some tents, and um, that's going to be CARES Act money for that. Um, and there's also been grants for that sort of thing that are related to CARES Act stuff. But um, you know, and also volunteers to serve uh, kids in town with uh, the school lunches during school days. Um, that that can't that that can't uh, you know that can't come to school because the and, people and these are needs regardless of how the vote goes for what the plan is in yeah that's in there will be online instruction even if there's in person instruction yeah. so there's yeah. be there, there's going to be I I don't know how many not not that many meals per day but someone needs to step up and deliver them yeah for, um, okay. Well, our two hours is, is, yeah. is a long meeting. So, so the next meeting is Monday, August 17th, uh, 6 p.m. We will continue these on Zoom. And if that's it, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Aye. Thank you very much. Good night, Bye. everyone. Nice to Thanks. see you. Good night. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you.